Hi everyone. Now to get started with this shop app, I have gone ahead and made flutter underscore shop underscore CPT21. CPT21 stands for cross platform training 2021. Not only that, uh, as you can see, we have a blank app here with a material app inside of it. Also, there is an assets folder inside of which we have images, which in return holds a handful of image. Not only that, you could come to pubspec.yaml where we have uh, written this up. Now, where can you find these images? You could come to this link here. You could either type this link now or you could find this link down in the description below. You will have all the images as you can see here. You can individually download them or you could just download this entire project and get started. So I'll see you in the next lecture. This app will have five screens that you could navigate through. The home screen, the feed screen, search screen, cart screen and the user screen. And lastly, we need another wrapper screen, the bottom navigation bar screen. Like most of you know, to navigate among all the five screen through a bottom nav navigation bar, we need a wrapper screen, the bottom navigation bar screen. So let us start making each of those one by one. Inside the lib folder, let's make a new folder called, and let's name it screens, my bad. Screens. And let us start making each screen one by one. First, I'll make home underscore screen dot dart, and I'll make I'll import material dot dart. Here, let us write STL for the home screen, and here something new. We are going to initiate the static route. So static const route name home screen let's change the container to be a scaffold all right and now we can copy this entire thing and let's make a new screen so home screen and then we have feeds screen here let's paste it and we can change all the pieces that says home to be feeds all right better let's make the third screen search underscore screen dot dart let's paste everything here and let's change it to be search let's make the fourth screen our cart underscore screen dot dart let's paste here and let's change it to cart let's make the last screen I mean the last navigate able screen and we'll name it user underscore screen dot dart and here let's paste one more time and let's change it to be user okay so now we are good one more thing, as you can see here, we have the capital C, but we don't have the same for the home. So I'll just change it to be home because I like consistency. All right. Now, lastly, uh, not lastly, let's first go to main. And here we have to come down where we, uh, we have the material.dart. We need a home or the routes to be exact yes the routes and the routes takes a map so a route table here we need to say we need to call each of their routes so as you can remember we have routes here right this route we can identify or navigate to each screen through this route as well so let's come here and let's first call home screen dot route name colon ctx home screen We cannot have this const here. Let's bring the const here. All right. Now we have the feed screen. Feed screen dot route name. Ctx 
Ghost Fit Screen. Alright. The search screen. Search screen dot route name CTX search screen for some reason whenever I start recording my laptop slows down a lot and it really annoys me uh, we have the card screen card screen dot route name CTX const card screen let's make the last navigatable screen the user screen so user screen dot route name and we need to bring the context and const user screen alright now we have the wrapper screen that we need so new folder and we're gonna name it bottom underscore nav underscore screen dot dart here let us import material dot dart and this one needs to be a stateful widget and I'll call it bottom nav screen I'll also give it a static const route static const route name uh, what should I name it let's name it bottom nav screen uh, since we have this route name here let us go to main.dart and also initiate this one I'll initiate it on top of everything else so bottom nav screen dot route name ctx const bottom nav screen alright we are good So after all these routes, we have the home parameter for the material app and I'll set the bottom navigation screen to be the home. Okay, so we are good. So now in the bottom navigation screen, let us change the container to be a scaffold. And let us restart. Now, this bottom navigation screen needs a few items, right, to get started with the uh, bottom navigation bar. Firstly, I'll just call the bottom navigation bar so you can see what are the items that we need. So, bottom navigation bar needs a bottom navigation bar. The bottom navigation bar needs a current index, so the number of index that we are in, current index, it needs an on tap. On tap and it needs items items so these three are the parameters that you must provide so for the item we have bottom navigation bar item and for the first one I want the icon to be const icon icons dot home home I want the label to be home I want the tool tip to be home. Now I can just copy this entire line and paste it five times. And now let us change this home to be RSS underscore feed. Here it should be feeds. And so should it be here, feeds. For the third one, I want a search yep and this should be search this two should be search for the fourth one I want uh, shopping underscore let's check what it looks like shopping back shopping back looks nice so I'll just keep shopping back and I'll change the car label to be cart and so the tooltip should be cart and lastly we have home I mean it should be changed to person because it identifies the user and here I'll change it to be user here I'll change it to be user now even if I save it you see we have nothing here because we still have two parameters that we must provide let us put some const here better 
No need for this const. No need for this const. Okay. Now, these two are the items that we need. So we can come to the, our bottom navigation screen state and let's make uh, an int current index equals to zero. So this current index could be passed here. Now we need an on tap. So an on tap where we expect an int i and we can do something we could uh, set the current index equals to i. So we can take this name here and put it here. Now with all of that, let's check if things are working out. Since we are in the bottom navigation screen, let's click the selected item color, selected item color to be colors dot deep purple accent and the unselected color unselected item color should be colors dot gray so let's save it and l we have one more thing that we did not do that is on this on tap when we are changing this current index to i this should be inside a set state a set state because the state of the app needs to be changed so now if I save it and if I click all right that is nice now let's go to the scaffold where we have this body and here we can um, write about a list at this current index so that we can change each page to do so firstly we need to make a list so a list and let's name it pages equals to a list And here, firstly, we need the home page or the home screen. We need the feed screen. We need the search screen. We need the cart screen. And lastly, we need the user screen. What is wrong? What's wrong with this? Make final? Okay, final. Let's give const. 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 One more const. Alright, so now we can access these pages depending on the current index and we can show each screen here. So, in the body, let's call pages at our current index. All right, so now we have something to show. If you s don't see anything, I can just go to this home screen and let's bring an app bar here. App bar, app bar. I should have made this app bar in the beginning, but I forgot. So title, const, should be a text that says home screen. So I'll just copy this, Control C, and come to our cart screen, paste it here, call it cart, all right. Let's go to home screen, where we have this entire app bar. Let's get this app bar. Let's go to our cart screen and remove this, paste it here, call it cart screen. I'll also get rid of this, so home cart feed, let's go to feed. Inside feed, let's paste this entire app bar and let's change the home to be feeds. Let's go to search, paste it here. Let's name it search, C A R C H. Let's go to user and let us paste it here. And let's change this to be user. All right, so now let's check. So you see, we are changing pages. That is nice. Now in the bottom navigation screen, I want this, uh, I want a floating action button here instead of this icon here. S to do so, let's get 
outside the bottom navigation bar and let's call the floating action button location first and it's going to take a floating action button hello at floating action button location dot mini center dot it should be centered not end mini center dot that is nice and after of this after this we need the actual floating action button so I'll call floating action floating action button it needs a child and the child should be a const icon icons dot search what is wrong the name parameter on press is required yes of course of course it is required and let us pass the on pressed also I have a tooltip to pass a tooltip should be search so where is our floating action button here it is now you see we have two things that we can click so to get rid of that where we have this search let's keep this icon and just put a null here and I'll remove this search also I'll remove this search here so for the middle item we just removed everything and if I save now see that one is gone much better also even if we click here you see we have our tooltip we have our tooltip that is great so we are done with the bottom navigation screen I'll see you guys in the next video one correction please make sure that where you have this floating uh, action button you cannot change the screen by clicking this floating action button this is because we haven't uh, used this on tap for the on pressed of the floating action button so click bring your on tap and set the i to be zero one two so let's put two here and now if i save it and click this icon here you see we are changing now we will work on the user screen here to work with the user screen first let us go to our bottom navigation screen where we have initialized our current index to be zero so whenever we restart the app if we do it now you see it always starts at the home screen uh, let's restart all right you see it always defaults back to the home screen this is because we have set the index to zero let us set the index to be zero one two three four so if we set the index to be four and we save it and let us restart it again you see now we are defaulting to the fourth index the user screen this is because whenever we start editing and we restart the app over and over again we don't have to click here and come back and blah 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 whatever so now for the user screen let us change it to a stateful widget because there will be a lot of things that needs to change and update after the scaffold we have this app bar here let's get rid of this entire app bar because we will be using something else today let's bring a body and the body needs a custom scroll view so a custom scroll custom scroll view the custom scroll view has slivers that we need so the slivers and firstly let's set a sliver app bar a sliver app bar where we want the pinned to be true also we have a uh, stretch which we want to be true so these two parameters true these are just visual parameters you don't have to worry about it you could leave it false or just not initiate it I like the view that it gives when both of these are true and I'll show you what each of them does next we have extended height extended height is 250 All right and then we have a flexible spacebar flexible space takes a flexible space bar 
and flexible spacebar has a few items that we will set. Firstly, the background. For the background, I want to set an image dot network. So let us get an image. For that, let's go to our Safari. I'll go to Pixels. Let us get a neon sign. It's just my preference. You could go with whatever you want. It doesn't have to be neon sign by any means. And I have a pretty slow internet today. Come on. Alright. Here. Let's just go with this one. Let's open it up in a new tab. Also, we will need another one. I'll just have a face here so that I don't have to come again and search later. Let's just do all the searching now. Oh my my, this internet. All right, let's go to this man. Come on now. Alright. So this two. Firstly, I'll take this one and let us copy image address. Where is it? take this copy image address and let us minimize it and let us paste it here let's check if it's gonna work let us restart it my bad the internet is pretty slow today so is why I am not able to do things fast enough my god, it took ages for the picture to load. Nonetheless, uh, after this picture, uh, let's put a comma. So, inside of this image widget, after the string, let us put the fit argument. So, fit should be box fit dot cover. And if we save it, that's a much better view. So, uh, the stretch here, the stretch here, what it does is, if we bring it down, you see it's stretching. And the pinned, I'll show you when we have a few different items here. We need a few different items to show the pinned. Alright, so after this, after this background, we have the center title. I'll put the center title here. Center title should be true. And then we have the title. For the title, I would like to initiate a row. A row must have children. And here, let's put a sized box first. Sized box should be accounts because it doesn't have to change. And let's put a width of 12. And then a circle avatar. A circle avatar needs a background image, which should be network image. After that, let's put another sized box. And after that, let's put a cons text that says Flutter Craft. Now, for this row, we have a size box, then a circle avatar, then another size box, and then the name. For the circle avatar, let's fire up our Safari again, where we had this man space image. Uh, copy image address. Now, if you're wondering, this guy is not me, I'm better than him. Alright, so let's save it. Yep, that looks nice. 
So, uh, now we are almost done. Let's just put a const here. I hate this blue lines. We will change it when we need to. Now, after this uh, sliver app bar, after this entire sliver app bar, we have sliver to box adapter. Sliver to box adapter. The sliver to box adapter has a few different items. Uh, one to be exact, actually. So I'll put a list view dot, uh, just a list view inside of it. So a list view. A list view needs some children. Now, you see if I save it, we have error and things are gone. This is because we are already inside a custom scroll view and inside of it, that we have another list view. List view by itself is a scrollable widget. So now we have a problem. To fix it, let's bring primary and this should be false and shrink wrap needs to be true. And if we save it now, yeah, we are here. Now inside of this, let's put a text first, a text that says user bag. And let's put a style of text style with a font size of 25 and a font weight of font weight dot bold let's see what it looks like what is wrong all right uh, I'll have this here remove this widget or wrap with a padding all right I'll change this padding to be symmetric and I'll just have a horizontal to be 8. That's looking good. I think W600 would be better. Yes, a better one. W700. Better. Now, after this one here, let us also put a decoration and the decoration will take text decoration so a text decoration and here text decoration my bad no bracket dot underline text decoration dot underline let's put a const here after this text, we need a sized box of height 10. After the size box, we want a list style. So a list tile. A list style will take a leading of const icon, icons dot favorite, f a v o r i t e favorite it will take a title of const text wish list and it will take a trailing of const maybe icon button where it needs an icon const icon icons dot uh, arrow forward arrow forward iOS uh, what is wrong it also needs an on pressed of course Cannot have this const with this on pressed here. All right.
right so if we save it now uh, we could change this view by wrapping this list style with a center and change the center to a card also this entire list style uh, should have an on pressed so an on on tap on tap and this icon should better have a color so a color colors dot uh, let's go with red accent let's see what happens all right now uh, what I want is we will have a few different cards like this so I want to not use this entire card like this over and over again it becomes messy what we could do is we could extract this widget and use it to our own preference so firstly let us uh, take this text here so I'll remove this const and let's extract widget and we will name it user tile text so user tile text user tile text will have a final string text and this should be a required parameter so re requi already required this dot text so now here we can put the text and now we could just come here where we have this user tile text and we can just pass the text to be user back and if we save it with the const in forward of it see it looks much better within the tree now also for the size box let us uh, get rid of get rid of this size box and let us write extract widget and we will name it user tile height space so for the user tile height space let us bring a final double height and after the key we could make a required parameter required this dot height and here we can just pass the height so now where we have this height we could just call height with 10 I think it was 10 all right also put the const here now lastly we have this card which I too want to extract so let's extract it extract it and let's call it user list style user list tile so for this user list style we have a few different items that we want this list style can have a subtitle so I'll put the subtitle to be a const text that says subtitle for now so let's start changing each of this firstly we need a final icon data icon data and on the left this should be the leading icon I'll just name it L icon we have final string title final string sub title final uh, icon subtitle subtitle and trailing icon so final icon data I'll name it T icon and also we have a final void callback and I'll name it on tap here for this icon not for this icon for this uh, icon data we can have another on tap right so for this I'll name it final uh, void callback and this should be T icon 
call back. Now with all of those, also for this first icon, let's put a color. So I'll change final color color. Now what I want is only the forward icon and the title should be required. Everything else should not be required and should only be passed if we need to. So let's put required this dot L icon and required this dot title and everything else should be as follows so uh, this dot we have the subtitle so the subtitle we have this dot we have the subtitle we have the T icon we have this dot T icon callback and we have this dot on tap. Also we must pass the color, so I'll put the required this dot where is our required this dot color? So now we could come here and if it is equals to null, I want the item to be null. All right, so the icon, the title, the color and the L icon are all required so this cannot be null. All these other parameters could be null because we may pass it, we may not pass it. Here uh, let's get rid of this, don't need this and here so the L icon, this icon will be L icon and let's get rid of all this const. Uh, this color will be color that we are getting so color this text will be the title subtitle will be the subtitle that we have so the subtitle with an exclamation because it could be null on tap will be our on tap and here let us pass the T icon and for this on tap, I'll pass the T icon on tap. All right, call back. What is wrong with our key now? Uh, mistakenly, we have got get rid of this. Oh, so let us put it back. Alright, so now if we get rid of this, and if we bring our user list style, user list style, here we can pass the L icon. L icon should be icons dot uh, favorite f a v o favorite color should be colors dot red, and the title should be wish list and now if we save it the null check operator used on a null value so if the subtitle is equals to null we are going to return null else we need a text or should we write here if we bring subtitle if it is equals to null we return null or we have this text all right 
that is great so now we have a very dynamic widget which we can use just by using this one widget here we don't have to use 50,000 other widgets so just this one will do so let's put a const a const also a const and for this very icon here I'll have a on tap and I'll just keep it empty for now after the title we also want the trailing icon T icon and the T icon should be icons dot arrow forward underscore iOS also I want the T icon callback which I'll set it to be empty and if we save it you see now we have this right and even we can click here we can click here I understand this part of the video might have been a bit fuzzy here and there it's because my uh, machine was not supportive enough you could just see what we have done we have all these uh, parameters that we have passed inside of this right it's a very easy one all these things and then we have this three required arguments that we want as a must and all this other are not required we can either use it or we cannot use it because even even if you use this subtitle it you see it will become larger if you don't use the subtitle it, subtitle it will stay the slim one so it's a better idea to use things dynamically and lastly for the subtitle what we have done is first we have a null check so if subtitle is equals to null this should stay null or it should come back to life now it's time that we use one more user list style so this user list style should have icons dot shopping cart yep and the color should be colors dot purple uh, deep purple accent let's try I don't understand why is this comma going and this text should be saying cart also we need I want the icon here so I'll just grab the icon from here also let us grab this on tap so I can have this on tap here okay great so now uh, what I'll do is I'll just put a comment here user bag after this enter user bag we have user settings here I want a new card inside of which the card should have a capital C inside of which we have a child and this child needs a switch list style so this switch list style dot adaptive I'll go with adaptive and first the value I'll set it to be false and on changed will give me a value and with that value we will do something Now we don't have to extract this uh, switch list style because we will use this just this one time. After that, let us give it a secondary. So a secondary. This should be a switch list tile dot adaptive. We need a secondary and the secondary should be a const icon icons dot light mode. And then we need a title. It should be a const text that says light mode. And now if we save it, we have it here also for this user settings let us get the user 
height so user tile height space and I'll set it to 15 first and then we will bring the user tile text and I'll change it to be user settings and then I'll get another user height space so user height space and this should be 10 let's put const in front of each of those and if I save it nice that is great let's get rid of this commas so it looks better so we have the user bag we have the user settings and now it's time that we work on the user information to work on the user information let me copy this first and after this card let's paste it and I'll change it to be information and so here information now we want some list styles so user user list style and first I want icons dot dot email and the color I'll just set the color to be color start red I'll change it later for the title I want email I also want a subtitle where it should tell email for now what's wrong here Also, I want an on tap. All right, so we have this on tap, and what I'll do is I'll grab this entire thing and paste it three more times. So one, two, three. In the third one, we do not need this on tap. I'll change this to be, I'll, I also don't need this now, or should I say date, here I'll write join date, and I'll change this to be watch later, uh, now let's check what's up, alright, so first one is email, the second one is call, should be phone number and let's just write number here let's bring it and say local shipping address address and if we save it Let's change this to be indigo. Let's change this to be yellow dot shade of 700. And for this one, I'll go with green. And let us also take this one, control X, on top. All right, so that's a bad one. Let's just bring it down back again. All right, I like this color combination. And this one should better be accent. Let's change this to 800. All right, better. I think the text was is better off without the underline. Let's check what it looks like without this underline here. I'll just comment it out so that we can change it back again. No worries. All right, this looks fine to me. What I'll do is so that we have everything aligned, I'll just bring, come here, and put a space first, and then bring the dollar sign and write text. 
So if we save it now, you see everything will have a space. Yes, much better. All right. Also for this uh, this thing here, this light mode. Let's change the color to be color colors dot amber dot shade seven hundred maybe. okay so now we are done making the user screen initially we still have one more thing to do which we will do in the next video all right so in the last video we had this UI here now what I want to do is I want a my bad I want a button here that should disappear when we move up and this thing should only appear when we actually move up when we come down this thing should disappear and the button should appear to do so uh, let's go down where we have this custom scroll view and this custom scroll view should be wrapped inside a column which we will change to be a stack a stack because a stack allows us to have to move our widgets independently in a 3d environment so we can come after this custom scroll view and make a floating action button this is floating action button and floating action button requires an on pressed of course and a child so let us put a child and the child should be a const icon icons dot camera if we save it we have this here now to change its position let us wrap it with a center which we can change to be a positioned positioned and firstly let us put top to be 250 and the right to be 20 now you see our extended height is actually 250 but we are still not aligned in between this is because in iOS for some reason this goes a bit above 20 pixel to fix this we can come here and write platform platform you see the first one is from dart html you need to take the one from dart.io here you see dart.io so platform dot is ios is ios so it should be 270 else it should be 250 and if i save it all right we are aligned now now what i want to do is whenever i scroll this thing should scroll with it as well we will do it after a few minutes let us extract this widget and i'll name it build fab and this build fab now has to do something firstly let us go up where we are we have our state and let's make a value here so double top equals to zero and we need a late scroll controller and I'll name it scroll controller and to initialize it I'll put an init state inside the init state let us write our scroll controller equals to scroll controller so we are initializing it where is it S -R -S -C -R -O -L -L scroll scroll controller and lastly let us put a scroll controller and let's add a listener to it so it, it, it refreshes every time we start scrolling and inside of this method let us just set it all right we're good now we can use this scroll controller inside our custom list view we have a controller property here where we can just assign it And let us restart it okay 
Okay, so now if we come down where we have our uh, build fab, what we could do is um, we could come down here. Right, so actually we cannot use this stateless widget because we, we need to access the controller that we have. To access the controller, let's do something. Let's just get this entire positioned. Control X, because we need to get rid of this stateless widget and we need a standalone widget. So widget, I'll name the same, build fab. This thing should return us the entire thing. So, yes. Now, here we have to set some properties. Firstly, what we need is we need a double default margin. This should be equals to this very thing here. Then we need a double a scroll start and this should be 230. We need a, my bad, this should be semicolons. We need a double scroll end and this should be our scroll start divided by 2. Now we have another variable double top equals to should be our default margin T A F A U L T default margin. We have a double scale, this should be equals to one dot O. Now we need to access the controller. So if our scroll controller dot has clients so has clients means when it starts scrolling we want a double offset variable so offset equals to should be our scroll controller dot offset so the amount of distance that the scroll controller is traveling and now what we want to do is we want to subtract it from the top Now, if the offset is less than our default margin minus scroll start, I want the scale to be 1. Else if offset is less than default margin minus scroll end scale should equals to be default margin minus default scroll end scroll end minus the offset and this entire thing should be divided by scroll end else the scale should be equals to zero so if you read here what we are doing is when we start scrolling once it reaches that 230 mark it should start shrinking unless and until it's smaller than any of this widget here any of this condition here if it is it should become zero now we can come down here and this we can just remove it and keep it to be the top variable that we have Now this floating action button should be wrapped inside a center which we can name transform and transform needs a transform 
and this should be matrix for dot identity and this should dot dot scale to the scale that we have so let's save it and let's see if it's working indeed it is but you see it's not aligned properly so we can come after this transform and click the alignment and call alignment dot center even if we restart it all right that is amazing now this finally this this thing should also disappear and reappear so we could come he up here where we have our flexible spacebar here we have our flexible spacebar we can grab this entire flexible spacebar control X and call a layout builder a layout builder will take context and a constraints and we can return inside it our entire flexible spacebar of course change it to a semicolon here we can call this top equals to const dot biggest dot height so this top basically means that when it's fully extended that height right now we can with this with this top here we can come to this row and wrap this in a center and called animated opacity inside this animated opacity we have a duration and the duration needs a duration widget where I want to set the millisecond to be 300 so the animation will play for 300 milliseconds and we have opacity so the opacity should be if our top is less than or equals to 200 I want I want it to be fully visible else it should be fully opaque so if we save it and let's restart let's also grab it here and now if we start scrolling you see this thing appears and if we come down you see that one disappears and this one appears so I'll just pause the video for everything to come up yes much better now alright so now it's about time we get started with theming to get started with theming uh, first go to popspec.yaml and have this two dependencies so the provider and the shared underscore preference I've already gone ahead and re-ran my app so please do that now firstly let us go to lib I'll get rid of this let's go to lib and let's make a new folder call it providers inside providers I'm going to make a new file and name it my underscore theme dot dart my theme dot dart will be a class my app theme where I want a static method so a static theme data and I'll name this theme data my themes now here I want to return a theme data now firstly this method should accept two arguments so bool is dark and a build context build context of context now inside of this let's call a brightness so brightness if we are in dark so if is dark should be brightness dot dark else it should be brightness dot light I'll just skip it this much I'll re-edit it later and now let's go down we can add of course a lot of other things so accent color app bar theme blah 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 a lot of things we will add things later now let's make a new class class theme notifier with change notifier here let's make a let bool is dark let's set a getter for it so bool get is dark 
and it should return us the value of is dark. Now also let us call the constructor for this class so theme notifier same name as the class name first brackets second bracket and inside of this let us initialize is dark equals to false now if you come down let's call a new method toggle theme and this should accept a bool value now what we want to do is we want to set is dark equals to value so whatever value we get we set it to is dark and lastly let us also notify the listener now this is all good and nice for changing the theme and so on we need something to save the theme as well so let us make load from preference I'll name it load, load from prefs and this should be an async and here we need to call shared preference let's name it preference equals to await shared preference dot get instance let's copy it what I want to do here is I want to call my is dark and I want to set it to preference dot get bool get bool should fetch from a key and I'll name this key to be theme but this entire line will return null when we run the app for the first time so I want to set an initial value of false now let us notify the listeners and lastly let us return is dark now we need another method to save to prefs save to prefs and this too should be an async method where we need to return our shared preference and let us call preference dot set bool set bool will be the same exact key so theme what you see here and here should be same and value should be is dark so now when we toggle the theme we need to save it so save to press and when we initialize this class we need to load from prefs and then we need to notify everyone who's listening so with that we can go to main.dart and here we can wrap this entire thing with a change notifier but before that I'll cut it call multi provider because in this app we will be using a lot of providers later on and as a child for this provider I'll set this material app now the first provider should be a change notifier provider where the create should be ctx and it should return us theme notifier now this is not all this was just the initialization of our provider now we need to wrap this material app with a consumer so it can consume data from the provider the easiest way is to wrap it with a stream builder and then change the stream builder to be a consumer so a consumer of type theme notifier we can get rid of this stream because this is not a stream anymore and here let us name the provider to be notifier and we need to set the third argument as nothing because we will not use it now we can access this provider inside the material apps theme here we can call my app theme my app theme dot my themes here the is dark will come from notifier so notifier dot is dark the getter that we have made and the context will be context now if we save it and let us rerun it now what we want to do is we want to use this switch as a trigger for our method so let's go to user screen where we have this uh, card my bad I have already yep now it's in the way that we want so this switch list style need to be wrapped inside a stream builder and let's change it to a consumer consumer of type theme notifier and we can get rid of this stream 
and here we need a notifier and a third argument that we do not need so we are going to set it as the underscroll now let us change everything so for the switch I'll firstly copy this what we want is if notifier dot is dark I want to paste this so if we save it so this here should be dark mode dark mode for the title I'll again copy this text here if this is is dark notifier dot is dark we want this text or we want that text and this should be dark mode for the value this should come from the notifier so notifier dot is dark and for the on change we are, we are going to tap the notifier that we have notifier dot toggle toggle theme and we want to pass the value so with that if we save it and let us restart the app all right let us try Alright, the app has fully restarted and let's see if we can change. And we do. That is nice. Now also to check if we can actually persist the data, let us turn this off and rerun it. And what I'll do is I'll pause the video and turn it back on again once it's up and running. Alright, so it is about time that we do a bit of theming, uh, I mean we do some custom theming. So for that I have gone ahead and added some code which you can just see here. So the brightness is if it's dark, I want the brightness to be dark and the brightness to be light if it is not dark. We have the app bar theme where the background color is colors dot this if it is dark and deep purple if it is not dark. Likewise we have the color scheme if it is in dark the color scheme should be dot dark with an on secondary dot colors dot white and the same goes for color scheme dot light and lastly we have this floating action button theme where we are setting up the floating action button theme so now we can save it and since we are only using this colors dot purple accent just just, just let us just get rid of this and I think we are still good to go yes we are let us put a const in front of it and we are good so that was it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Now we will work on our empty card screen. So the empty card screen is, for example, you have loaded this app for the very first time and you haven't added anything to your card. So if you come to this card screen, I want to not leave it empty like this. I want to have an image here and some text with a button that would lead you to the store page right we don't want any empty screen on our production app now to do so let's come to lib and let's make us a new folder call it widgets widgets inside widgets we are going to be having a new file call it empty card dot dart empty card dot dart needs an import of material dot dart and we need a step less widget that we will name empty cart. Now this empty cart will give us a list view first of all because I want some sort of scrolling functionality in case we are porting our app into some smaller device and list view has a children parameter. Now list view first of all will take a container for us so container and in the container I want the width to be double dot infinity so the enter width and for the height we need media query dot off context dot size dot height multiply it by 0 
that would be a good size for us now inside of it we need the decoration and the decoration will take box decoration box decoration has an image property where we pass a decoration image decoration image will take image and for this we will pass asset image asset image now for the asset image in the beginning of this tutorial we have already gone ahead and added all these assets also we have gone to pubspec.yaml where we have initialized all of this so let us come to the card screen the empty card screen to be precise and write assets slash images slash empty card dot png now if you save it hmm, nothing nothing because we haven't added this empty card anywhere so let us go to card screen where we have this empty app bar and nothing else let us go to the body call a save area and the child should be empty cart now if we save it we have this here nice let us go to the fit property after the image we can have a fit property where I want box fit dot fill let's check what's up better and also for this container I want to set a margin I want to set a margin because I want some spacing from the top so edge instead dot only and the top should be 80 so let's save and see what's up better after this container I need a text that says you your cart is empty so your cart is empty let us say uh, cross axis alignment we don't have a cross axis alignment so let us change it to column and the column will give us the cross axis alignment and here I want to pass cross axis alignment dot center better and since we have now used column instead of list view we are losing our scrolling functionality to get it back we need to wrap it with a new widget and make it single child scroll view all right now this text needs some style of text style where I want the font size to be 26 and the font weight needs to be font weight dot bold maybe 600 let's make it 32 yep and after this text we want another text but between those text we need a sized box size box of height perhaps 30 and we paste the same thing here let us change this text here looks like you didn't let's make it to the new line so this thing this thing here indicates new line Yeah, you see, we have this N here, so we have a break here. Let's change it to 26. And we need a color. So for the color, let's see if we have something. Theme dot of context dot unselected widget color. Yeah, better. Unselected widget color. This one looks nice. And I think we can get rid of this what happens if we don't use it no, 
better be use it yet better so good let us get rid of this and we need another size box control c and after this text let us paste it here after this we want a new container so a container with a width of a double dot infinity and this container will give us a child what is wrong and we want an elevated button on pressed we will leave it to the empty function now and the child should be a text that says uh, shop now all right this container as well needs some padding of edge inset dot symmetric in the horizontal space so from both sides and I want the spacing to be about 20 all right what if we get rid of this let's make it 50 all right and for the style let's bring up a text style and give it a font size of 26 I know not allowed font size of 26 So what happens if we change our theme? But I always want the color to be white. So here we can pass the color to of colors dot white. Let's make it twenty two. This looks much better now. Also, let us go up where we have this 30 and make it 50, make it 30 better. So, that was it for this video. In the next video, we will work on our full card screen. See you. In this lecture, we will be working on a widget, a singular card item here. So, how a singular card item should look like. So, it should have an image and then its details alongside with with its quantities. Now to do so, firstly I'll go to my widgets folder and make a new file. Call it full underscore new file. Call it full underscore card dot dart. And inside of it, let us firstly get the material dot dart. And then let us call a stateful widget. A stateful widget because we will have a few different items that should render depending on what we want. So call it full cart. Great. Now this full cart screen first of all should return us a scaffold. It should have an app bar with a title that says cart. Now before we go any further, let us go to our main cart screen where we are currently showing our empty cart widget here. And firstly I'll change it to be the full cart. Now you see we have an error here. An error because this card screen has an app bar and this full card screen also has an app bar. So now we have two app bars. So let us get rid of this one, the one in card underscore screen. So for the full card screen, let us start working. So let's call the body and here we are going to call the safe area. Safe area and safe area needs a child. Uh, so first of all, I'll call a container. A container and give it some decoration first of all. So this container should have 
a decoration of box decoration and firstly I want some border so border border dot all let's give us give it a width of two and a color of colors dot gray and this container should have a width of double dot infinity and a height of 150 you can change it however you want I, I like I would like to go with these measurements here now you see we have a problem that our border is all the way on the borders of the screen so to fix it let us wrap this container with a padding and if we save it it is much better now I want just this two corner to be rounded so we could go inside this decoration and after border dot all also let us call border radius where I want border radius dot only so top right and here we are going to call a radius dot circular and pass 16 all right and I'll use the same value for bottom right so bottom right we pass the same value better let us make it constant because I do not want it to rebuild every time we refresh this page now inside of this after the border here let us go after this box decoration and let us call the child of this container firstly I want a row a row because if you think about it inside this whole container I need a row because on the left I want my image and on the right I want the details of everything so the name the quantity the price the subtotal and everything so for the row firstly let us get another container so container on the left and give it a width of 130 a color of colors dot gray and now if I save it you see this is what we have all right now for the container also let us pass a decoration a decoration of box decoration and now we have an error an error because inside a container if you are using a decoration you cannot pass the color outside the decoration you have to pass it inside of it great now after the color I want to call an image so at inside the decoration you need a decoration image and here we have another image here I will pass a network image a network image because we will fetch the images from a network even later on in this tutorial we will be fetching all the images from our Firebase right I've already gone ahead here and added this image here so let us get the image address and if we paste it here we have this image inside of it not only that I also would like to get a fit argument so here inside of inside the network image we have an argument called fit or is it outside yes outside so fit box fit dot cover so what this box fit will cover will do it will fill up this entire space you see this image is in a landscape mode even if we change this image to be a one from the portrait if I copy it so copy image address and if I paste it here and save it it still looks very nice great now after this image let us come outside of it so outside this container and firstly I need a const sized box a sized box of width 10 and now I can start working on the things that are here so firstly I need a flexible a flexible a flexible because inside of this things need to be flexible enough and the child should be a column a column will take a children
children. My bad. Golem that takes a children. Better. Let us pass all the commas and now we are good. Now inside this column, firstly, I need to make a sized box first of all. A size cost. A sized box of height 10. Height 10 because I want some height from the top here. I do not want my things to be stuck with this line here. After this size box, let us pass a row because now things should go from left to right, left to right. So a row with the child, children. And inside of this children, firstly, I'll pass a flexible, so a flexible text widget. Flexible will take a text where I want to, for now, write monitor2 and pass a style for it, so at style, text, style and the font size should be 18 great after all this text, I still have some other things to do so for the text, inside the text widget here I want to set the max line or the overflow the overflow to be overflow dot ellipsis text overflow dot ellipsis together with this flexible and text overflow dot ellipsis we will always ensure that we are within this boundary and nothing goes outside of it After this text, let us come outside of it. And now I want an ink well. An ink well so that we can make a, an icon that we can press on. So on tap, I'll leave the on tap to be empty for now. My bad, control X, this should be outside the flexible. And then I want a child of const icon icons dot close and this icon should have a color of colors dot red now this icon should be on the right side so we can come to this row and call its main axis so main axis alignment should have space between. Now you see the, even this thing is on the total right. So to fix this we can wrap it with a padding here. So a padding and instead of all let us call only and inside it let us call left. So from left or should it be right. So from the right it should have 8. Nice. Now this row is done. After this row, we need another row. So now we can come outside of it and pass another const sized box and give it a height of a size z. Height of 7 would be alright. And after this size box, we need another row another row because now we need to work with other children that we have so the first thing we need is a flexible or just a text a text that says price so price space and for this one I'll use a style so a style text style with the font size that should be 16 all right and after this text we need another text and that text should be inside a flexible because the amount of money could be a lot or it could be a lot less so I want that thing to be flexible enough to change its position depending on the amount that we set inside. 
So inside this flexible, let us pass a dollar sign and 450.00. Let us pass 450. And for this text, I want the overflow to be text overflow dot ellipsis and it should have a style of text style font size being 16 that is great now you see this row here we have one text that is constant that is not going to change and this text here has two different properties so the first one is flexible and the second one is text overflow dot ellipsis now let us see why do we need it for example if I turn it to be zero 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 a lot of zero and save it you see this thing is gone it's not going outside it's not coming it's not pushing down this is the reason we changed it to be this number here or we wrapped it with this widget here now we can just copy this entire row and use it two more times because here and here now if you save it so for the first one we'll leave it to be price for the second one we can make it subtotal and for the third one we can make it shipping much better now after all of this let us come down after this row here and now we will use another row a row to pass our quantity button so first of all I'll use a text button and on press should be empty and the child should be a text that says minus and for this text here I'll use a style of text style that takes a font size of 25 now if I save it you see this is what we have here after this text button I'll use a text that for now just says one and it needs a style as well so I'll just copy the style from here pass it here and this should be 20 and then I'll copy this text button again so control C and after this text let us just paste it and for this text button I'll change the size to be 20 now if we save it and also I'll change it to be plus we have a minus button and a plus button now to take this thing on the right hand side we can come to this row and pass our main axis alignment to be main axis alignment dot end and now if you save it this is looking nice so I can plus it minus it we will set everything later on and even if we come here and we change the theme go back this is what it looks like now let us set up a logic to see if we are going to be showing the empty card screen or the full card screen so in our card underscore screen dot dart first of all let us initialize a list here of products this is just a dummy list we might use it we might not use it we're just using it for a ternary operation now and then we set this ternary operator here so if product is empty we are going to be showing our empty card else we're, we will show our full card and also let us get rid of this const here so now if we save it since the product is actually empty we are showing our empty card screen and if we later if we start putting things inside this products we will show our full card all right so in the last section or the last video we worked on individual item that will go inside the card now we want a list of draggable items and also we want a checkout section that we can click to check out now firstly I would like to do some changes here the primary change being if the product dot is empty if this is true 
is empty emp empty i would like to show a scaffold so for example i would like to go with the empty screen but if it is uh, not empty i'd like to go with another scaffold so a caff scaffold where the body should be the full card screen all right so if we change this you see now we uh, we are in the cards the full cards page or else we were in the empty card page now one more thing if we are in the full card page I want an app bar here and not in the full card widget so let's make an app bar here with the title that says text and we just write here cart now you see we have a problem because we are getting an app bar from the full card screen so to wrap around it firstly what I'll do is I'll just remove everything and I'll use this padding so let us go down get this entire padding control X and we are going to return it here instead of the scaffold now it's gone now if we come to our card screen so now we have a scaffold for the empty card screen and we have another scaffold with an app bar for the full card screen so the idea is I only want the app bar to come up if we have the if we are in the full card mode now along with that after this title I want some action and this should be an icon button an icon button with an on pressed and the icon should be a const icon icon icons dot delete and if we save it yes that is nice also uh, after all of this so now we are good we have done our first part and for the second part of this video I'll make a new widget here so widget and call it bottom checkout section and here let us return a container for now and we will use this bottom section after this body so here we have a bottom sheet here we can use this bottom checkout section for the bottom checkout section however let us get started firstly I need a width I need to set a width of double dot infinity and the child should be a row with the children and firstly I need a text so a text let us write a total dollar sign and four five zero dot zero zero this would, that would be sufficient for now and then we need a elevated button on press should be empty and the child should be another text where we write C H E C K O U T check out and we want some space between them so we can come to this row and write main axis alignment main axis alignment dot space between and we can also wrap this row with a padding that is good and we can change this container to be a size box great now let us see if we, how many widget can we fix here now we are cutting into it so let us go after this text and we have an overflow here so overflow should be text overflow dot ellipsis 
and if we save it not much so let's see if we can hook this up with expanded put a center and then put expanded yes that is good but I'll keep it here 450 and for this button here I want some more space so one two three and at the end one two three great now let us put some style for this so, so style text style color should be colors dot white regardless of which mode we are in great and I'll also copy this style here so style style control C come here and I'll not use the color here but I'll use a font size font size of 22 let's see a bit too large I'll go with 18 and save I think that's better so let's try it again one two three four five six yeah that is nice all right now what we are doing is we are using this thing here so if product is not empty so this thing here if we remove it so we are actually checking if the product is empty show us this and if we put an exclamation in front of this it means if product is not empty hence we are showing this what I want to do is here come here and for the body I'd like to use a list view builder so a list view dot builder a list view builder will take a an item count so item count an item count I'll set for 10 an item builder should take a context and an index and it will return us the full cart widget so with that if we save now we have it here uh, we have some problem here the problem being the last item is not coming up so to fix it we could come down and maybe wrap it with a container and put some margin edge inset only and the bottom we can set 30 let's see what happens maybe we go for 40 how about we go for 10 let's go for 50 that is a whole lot of space to digest alright but nonetheless this is not a good solution my bad what we should be doing is we should use this margin for the entire list view and not the full card instead so we got rid of the container here and let us put the container around the list view builder and here let us save it now if we go down yes it's better much much better so with that i'll see you guys in the next video all right so now we will start working with the feed screen how to do so first of all let us go to our bottom navigation bar and let us set the current index to be 0, 1, or up to 1. This is because every time we hot restart this app, I want the app to default back to this page. Right. So now let us get rid of this. And what to do with the feed screen? For the feed screen, I want to show new items in this manner here. 
So one item here, one item here, and then so on and so forth. To do so, we have to use uh, a widget called the grid view builder. So we can use the body here, and let's make a grid view, grid view dot builder, and grid view dot builder needs these two items. These are the must items that you must provide. So let's put a comma here, and for the item count, I'll set it to be ten, or perhaps twenty. For the grid delegate, I'll pass here sliver child grid delegate. My bad. If we come here, we have sliver grid sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count. Now for the sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count, a mouthful of name, I'll set the cross axis count to be two. Child aspect ratio to be two by three. Cross axis spacing to be ten, and the main axis spacing to be ten. For the item builder, I'll use the CTX I, and this will return us. For now, I'll just have here the Flutter logo. Later on, when we work with the widget, we will pass it down here. So if I save it, this is what you get to see. This is what a grid view builder does. So if I put it from cross axis count 2 to 3, this is what is going to happen, right? I'll set it to 2. Alright, so let us go to this widgets folder and let's make a new file. Call it bits underscore product dot dart. Here, let's import material dot dart. And this needs to be a stackable widget. So bits product. For the container, since we already have this fits product here, I'll go to our fit screen and instead of this flutter logo, let us just use our fits product. So now nothing is here because there is nothing within the widget. Let us start working. I'll set the height to be 300 and let us call the decoration box the decoration call the border to be border dot all of width to and a color of colors dot gray call the border radius and pass border radius dot circular of 12 so this is what we have now we can come to this feed screen and where we are using this grid view builder i'll wrap it with the padding just so we have a nicer look yes better now here where we are working with the, the singular widget let us keep working we have our color gradient image shape all right so after the box decoration i'll call a child and i'll use a column a column because now we are inside each container where we want to divide them from top to bottom right so first I want an image and then I want some text so first I'll use a container and the container needs a child as image dot network And I'll get the image source from here first of all. So let us get the top image address. You can go to any website, maybe a pixel, maybe something else, but it doesn't matter. And for the container, I'll set the constraints of box constraints. And the min height should be 130. And the max height should be media query of context dot size dot height multiplied by 0 0.2 and after this container we can set a const sized box of height perhaps 10 and then a text of description 
So now we have this size box and then the description here. For the column, I'll set the main axis alignment to be main axis alignment dot start. Or should it be cross? So alignment, cross axis alignment dot start. All right. Let us also use some padding here. So padding should be the symmetric of horizontal. Better. So just to test out, I have another picture here. This one is in portrait. The last one was in a landscape. So I'll just paste it here. And if I save it, we have some issue. The issue being this uh, this is, this text here is getting pushed down or it's getting pushed up. So we need some other solution. What if we have a mean height of 160? And now if we go back to our landscape picture, so copy image address, and if we paste it here. And back. Yes, it's better now. We need a bit more, perhaps 170. Make it 2 2. All right, that is better. So, mean height of 170 and max height of Media query of context of size of height multiplied by 0 0.22. Also, uh, while we were using this picture here, so copy image address, and if I paste it, we have some issue here. The issue being it's going to the start. Now, to tackle this, we could Rid of this and it should be our main axis. For the main axis, we could use main axis dot n. All right, I'll leave it here. Let's put a style of text style. Call a font size. Should be style. And the font size could be 18. We could use the overflow of text overflow dot ellipsis. Ellipsis because, for example, if we keep on writing a lot of things, also we need to set this max line to be 1. So, this is nice. Alright, after the description, we have a few other things. I'll use this const widget here, and after this, I'll use it to be 4 and I'll reuse this text and this time it should be 12 and I need a color of color stop gray and here I want to write quantity 12 left all right and not only that we need it one more time so I'll just copy this entire size box and this text copy it paste it here and here it should say about the price so I'll just write here dollar sign to 99.99 .99. and this time this shouldn't be gray at all I need it to be 16 and the font weight should be font weight.w800 
and for the upper one I use the font weight dot font weight that be 900 or no better not only that uh, this entire quantity text that we have should be wrapped in a row so I'll just wrap it in a column and then pass a row a row because after this text I want an icon button but I'll use it with an inkwell so inkwell and the on tab on tab should be an empty function and the child should be a const icon icons dot more more hurries all right and for this row I'll use the main axis alignment main axis alignment dot space between So, uh, that was it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. To have this staggered grid style for our feed screen, we used this plugin here called the Flutter Staggered Grid View. You could come to installing and copy this, then come to your project where you have your pubspec.yaml and paste it here. Then save it and click pubget to get all the dependencies that you need and then let us start coding now to use this you could come to your exact page where from wh where you got this plugin and come to example or readme here you can copy this piece of code that you have this code has been provided to you by the team that have made this to make it easy so let us grab this entire thing, stagger grid view, copy it, come out and for our feed screen we want to keep this padding and inside this where we have the grid view builder we'll just remove this much and paste it here. Let's not forget to pass the comma. Now we need to import the stagger grid view so let us do that and I'll firstly I'll get rid of this new now you see this item builder is returning us this item here this item is putting this thing up here now what I would like to do is first of all uh, I'll get rid of this container here so let's put a comma here and let us get rid of this entire container and here we want feeds product and if we save it this is what we have firstly I'll get this item count up here I like my item count to be on top and I'll just make it 30 now we need to change the cross axis so let's change the cross axis count to be 44 uh, it already is 4 here I'll use I I like to use I and here let's keep it to 2 and this one we will change it to be 3 and 4 so 3 4 now if we save it you see this is the design we had all this time and for the main axis spacing we are going to make it 10 so now we have 10 here and for the cross axis I'll also make it 10 now if we save it this is the look that we had all the time until now I'll see you guys in the next one. In this video, we will use this badge for each of our feeds product. Now, firstly, I have went back to our grid view dot builder instead of staggered grid view. I just wanted to show you guys how to use staggered grid view. You might come up with some creative solution, but for me, I won't be using it. I'll go with my nice and old grid view builder. As you can see here, all the things are up and straight. And now let us see how to implement this badge here. First of all, come to pop.dev where you can find this badges 2.0.2. Come to installing and get your dependency here. 
come to your project where you have your pubspec.yaml, add it, save it, and then get it. Then come to your feeds product. Here, first of all, this this return statement is showing us a container. This container is this entire container here, isn't it? What we want to do is first of all, we come to the come here where we have our readme. Come down and we want to use this badge here. Not the one with chip, but the one with badge. So, copy it. Come back to your project and wrap this container with a column and then change the column to be a stack a stack because we want some three-dimensional space save it now since we are inside a container I mean inside a stack we can go after this container so select here so that we can see where this container ends and here it ends and here we can paste the batch now let us import it and if we save it here is our batch we can change this text to be new and change the color to be pink accent also I want some animation so I'll turn it to be true and for the animation animation type I'll use batch animation type to be scale so let's see how does the scale works so if I go to a new page and come back this is what the scale looks like now let's see what does the slide looks like so go to some page and come back all right I'll stick with slide you can choose whatever you want let us put a const here now some of you might think or try to ask how do we change this new here we can wrap this badge with a positioned widget since we are inside the stack we can use positioned so now I can use bottom to be 20 so if I save it you see here we, we have it you can do whatever you want here so you can have right you can have left you can have top you can have a lot of thing right but for me I won't be using this position I just wanted to show you guys what you could do so this works for me and I'll, I'll also check how does it look like for the light mode I think uh, I'll just stick with this deep purple accent. Yes, I'll just stick with this. Alright. I have gone ahead and made our app look like this. Now you see we have a back layer, a front layer, and so on and so forth. To do so, Firstly, you have to come to your pub.dev and search for backdrop. And then if you come to installing, you have this dependency here. Copy this. Go back to your pubspec.yaml and paste it here. Now, in the home screen of your screens folder, if we go to this pub.dev, we have an example bar here. And let's copy this backdrop scaffold until here until here because material app is with return so material lab will have the semicolon we want to take the one after that so let us just copy it come back here and in the scaffold we are not going to use this body anymore instead we're just going to be using I mean we will not use that app bar but just this body Now it's time that we start importing, so let us start importing here. Backdrop app bar, backdrop. Let's get this backdrop button. And now if we save it, we have it, right? We are back. What I want to do is first of all, I want to change this to be flutter shop and I do not want this subheader so let us remove this subheader also uh, let us get rid of this widgets here we do not need that 
and here we have a leading property after the title I'm just going to be using this backdrop toggle menu button so I'll just copy it cut it and use it here instead of this icon here I'm going to be using home underscore menu so with that if I save it or should it be menu home no it was alright so now if I click it you see we have this so to go to the menu we can click the menu and to come back to the home we can click the home alright now for this actions let us set a circle or perhaps a icon button icon button and I'll keep the on pressed as empty and for the icon I'll use circle avatar this circle avatar should have a background color of colors dot white and the child should be another circle avatar and the circle avatar should get an, a background image and this should be network image network image because we want to fetch the image from internet and later it will use our own image from firebase and to get this image one dummy image i have collected one image from this link here you can find this link in the section of this video in the github all right now for this second circle avatar i also want to set the radius to be 14 so now we have a nice circular ring around the circle avatar so with that this was it for the backdrop video in the next video we will implement this backdrop here back layer now we will start working with our home screen and first we, were, we are going to start with the back layer that we have here now before you go any further i would suggest all of you to come to your bottom navigation bar and set the index to be zero so every time you hot restart or hot reload your app defaults back to the home screen now firstly you see we have an incredible amount of height here which we do not need so come to backdrop scaffold and set the header height to be media query dot off context dot size dot height and multiply it by 0 0.2 now you see this has dec decreased a fair amount now if you come down you see you have the back layer here everything regarding the back layer should go in the back layer but to keep this home screen a bit lean we are going to work in the widgets folder and pass it here so let's make a new file call it back underscore layer dot dart import material dot dart make it a stateless widget call it back layer and first we want a stack a stack needs a children but before we go any further I suggest we come to home screen and change the container to be our back layer great now inside the stack firstly let us call the center and inside the child we call a column column needs the children and now we can bring a container here this container will have a height of 80 a width of 80 and decoration of box decoration inside of which we will set a color to be colors dot gray call it border radius and pass border radius dot circular of 12 great inside this container though after the box decoration let's call a child and here we are going to firstly call the padding where we want to pass the padding to be edge inset dot all of eight this better be a const here 
and after the padding inside the padding of course let's pass a child called image dot network and here I would like to use the same image that we were using here so come to our home screen where we have this link and copy it come and paste it here all right now in, since we are inside the column and after this container let's call a const sized box give it a height of 40 we'll see what we do with it later and after that I'll call a text button dot icon so the on press will be empty the icon should be a const icon icons dot home firstly and the label needs to be a text where I say home screen now uh, I want this home screen then I want the feed screen and then the search screen and then the uh, cart screen user screen and then finally I want another one to upload our own product now I could just go on copy this thing and paste it a whole lot of times which would work but to keep things a bit lean I'll extract this here so hold it extract widget and call it back layer button now this back layer button should have things that come dynamically right if I save it so here we can expect a final string title and a final icon data icon and lastly a void callback so a final void callback on pressed now we can come inside of it and call require this dot title require this dot icon required this dot on pressed now with all of that we can change this on press to be an on pressed change the icon here and here we can pass the title so now we can use this back layer button and first of all I'll keep the on pressed first to be empty call its title pass a text call home screen and the icon should be icons dot home what's the error that we are getting alright here we have to pass a null check I guess now we cannot use const alright so with that now we can just copy this copy and pass it a few more times so firstly we have home screen the secondly we need our feed screen and here we should have RSS feed for the third one I'll pass search screen and the icon should be search for the fourth one uh, we write card screen and the icon should be shopping back the fifth one should be user screen and the icon should be icons dot person and lastly the last one should be upload a product and I'll get rid of the screen and here I'll use icons dot upload now if I save it this is what we get now to bring this thing a bit down I'll also use another size box so control C and come above this container here this container here and above this 
I'll paste it. Now one more thing, if we are changing to some other phone, this thing might be a bit uh, tiny in some other device, right? Now to tackle that, we are going to wrap this column with a new center and change the center to be single child scroll view. Uh, that is not something I wanted. Let's do something. Let us go back. So this center, let us wrap it with... So we keep this center and for this upper center, we change it to a new widget. Wrap it with a container and change the container to be single child scroll view all right better so we have stack and then inside of it the single child scroll view and then why do we have two center let us remove one great now lastly I want to do some uh, visual element behind the stack that we have now to do so just a moment to do so, firstly, I'll use a container that should go above this single child scroll view. So a container with a decoration of box decoration should have color of colors dot white dot with opacity and the opacity should be 0 0.2. 0.2 after the opacity I'll also set the border radius to be border radius dot circular of 12 border radius dot circular of 12 and for the container I'll set a width and the width should be of 200 and the height should be 300. Now, not only that, I'll also wrap this container with a center and change the center to be positioned. And inside the position, I want the top to be minus 100. And from left, I want it to be minus 28 not only that this this thing has gone up and on the left outside the screen I also want to wrap this center uh, this container with a new widget wrap with where is wrap with my bad wrap it with this widget and this widget should be transform dot rotate and here I'll send an angle of minus 0 0.5 now if I save it this is what we get not only that I'll also extract this position here so extract widget rotated underscore rotated box this is just for the visual element it has nothing to do with our code but it's just for the visual element and I want you guys to know how to design your app as per your own wish. Now let us put a final double top final double left so here we can do require this dot top and require this dot left and here I want to use top here I want to use left so let us pass the values here for the rotated box we pass the top to be what we had minus 100 and for the left we pass minus 28 save it and we still have the same value also I want to use another rotated box and this time this should be minus 100 and 200 
So instead of this minus 28, I'll just use 200. Save it. We have this design that we have here. You could change it to whatever you want. I'll just keep my app to be this. So this is what we have now. All right, so now to get started with this carousel that you see here, carousel is a banner that you could edit as much as you want. You could put your pictures or advertisement here, and then you can choose what happens when you click. I'll just keep it simple. I'll keep it static and I'll show you how to use it. Now to begin, first of all, let's go to pop.dev and search for carousel pro null safety 1.0.2. Get your dependency here, copy it come to your project go to popspec.yaml and save it here save it click get packages and you should have everything up and running now come to your home screen and here instead of this f container in the front layer so front layer is the layer that you see here I want to use a list view a list view because the list view will give us children and inside of the children I want a container a container that has a height of 200 and a width of double dot infinity now if I save it it's gone alright it's gone because I coded it before and I didn't save it so that I could show you what we are going to build alright now uh, what I want to do is as a child I want the carousel carousel here and you see carousel has this images that you must provide and this images is list of widget so let's go up inside our widget build method let's make a list of type widget and call it carousel images and I'll just paste things here so all this image.asset image.asset all of these are widgets now how am I getting all these which images we have added those before here so you can see we have carousel 1 carousel 2 carousel 3 and carousel 4 so I've gone ahead and added all of those to these images now we could just come down and say to be carousel images and if we save it we have it here now let us do some modification for it. I'll set the autoplay to be true. I'll set the autoplay duration to be a duration widget where I'll set the seconds to be 5. I'll also set the animation curve to be curves dot fade in fast out slow in and then for the for this dots I'll set the indicator BG padding to be 7 what's wrong and I'll set the indicator size so the dot size dot size to be 2 I'm not really sure what's happening with my ID here I'll close the video after this one and restart it that 2 is a bit too small let's settle for 5 yes that's better and for the box fit I'll set the fit do we have the fit box fit to be box fit dot fill also we have a lot of other things here you could uh, come here and set your properties for what happens when you you see you have your on image tab on image change so what happens when you change the image or what happens when you tap the image for now we are not going to do anything with it but you could edit your own app as much as you want so that was it for the carousel. I'll see you in the next one. Now, one more thing. Since we have a widget that is changing constantly, it would be best to change our state less widget into a state full one. And now we have our widget state here. So we could just get 
our list my bad from here until here cut it cut it and come to our state plus here and paste it so uh, with this we will have better performing app because stateless is something that doesn't go hand in hand with things that change so with that we're done all right so now i would like to work with popular brands so for popular brands what i want is i want a text here that says popular brands and then a button here that would allow us to see all the brands together but after this row here I also want a swiper widget here a swiper widget that will have the brand logo inside of it and we can swipe through it now to get started first of all let's head to pop.dev and here find this package so flutter underscore swiper underscore null safety and copy the dependency so copy it head to your project where you have your pubspec.yaml and paste it save it click on pub.get and you're good to go now in our home screen where we want to start working first of all I'd like to initialize a list of this sort so a uh, final list call it swiper images and here let us just have all these assets so these assets are what you can find here so I have just gone ahead and added assets underscore images and then Adidas, Apple, Dell, H&M, Huawei, Hi Nike and Samsung so these are the brands that we will be working with for this app you could add as much as you want regardless I'll be using just this now this carousel is in our front layer inside a list view and inside this sized box so let us go after this size box and make another size box first of all so a sized box of height 20 and after this one I'll use a row with uh, children inside of it and here firstly I'll use the text that says popular brands and this text also needs a style of text style with a font size of 20 and a font weight of font weight at w600 all right I'll mark it as const this doesn't have to change now after this text let us initialize a text button a text button with an on pressed of empty function now and for the text I'll use the const first const const it should be a text widget and here it says view all now if I save it this is what we have firstly I'd like to wrap this row with some padding and instead of all I'll use symmetric and for the horizontal I'll just set 8 so horizontal to be 8 not just that also for the row I'll set the main axis alignment to be main axis alignment dot space between alright so after this padding I'll use again this size box so let us go after this padding and here I want a container a container that should have a height of 200 and a width of double dot infinity now as a child I'll set the swiper widget so the swiper widget is something that we can get from here so swiper and swiper widget needs an item count and the item count should now be dependent on this list here so the item count should be our swiper images dot length and the item builder 
will be the same as other builders so context index and it will return us a container this container will firstly have some decoration so decoration of box decoration and I'll set the border to be border dot all of width to and color of colors dot gray. Also I'll set the border radius to be border radius dot circular of twelve. And lastly, for this container that we are using for the swiper. Let's get out of the box decoration and let's call its child where I want to set image dot asset and the image dot asset will come from our swiper images list at index. So now if I save it, we have it here and let us do some configuration for this swiper. This swiper has some arguments that we want to set. So firstly, let's go to our viewport fraction and set it to 0 0.8 and for the scale I'll set it to be 0 0.9 so save it alright that's looking better and also for the autoplay I'll set it to be true so now it looks much better and as for the image I'll also set the fit property here to be box fit dot contain so with that that was it for our popular brand section and in the next video we will work on categories alright now to get started with the category section uh, I want the category to be between these two widgets so the carousel and the row of text and button here so let's go there where we have this padding I'll copy this padding first of all paste it get rid of this row where do we have remove this widget firstly I need to get rid of this text button and now I can get rid of this row here So now we have this popular brands and here I want to set it to be categories. Now this categories is a bit too close to the carousel so I'll use a const sized box of width 20. Save it. what's wrong For some reason, we cannot access this sized box. My bad, this should be height instead of width. So, I set this thing up and we uncomment it. So now we have this categories and the categories should be a similar widget like this. But instead of using a swiper, we are going to be using a list view dot builder. So after this padding, let us make a container a container that has a height of 200 and a width of double dot infinity and as a child I want a list view dot builder list view dot builder has two important arguments firstly the item count and I'll set it to be 20 and the item builder to be 
context index and it will return us a dummy flutter logo for now so i'll just use flutter logo this flutter logo is being used just as a placeholder holder later i'll change it when we have the custom widget ready i'll give it a size of 80 and now you see this is in the vertical orientation to change it let us go inside the list view builder and change its scroll direction to be axis dot horizontal save it and we have it great now keeping it here let's go to our widgets let's make a new file call it category dot dart and for the category dot dart firstly I'll import material dot dart let's make it a stateless widget call it category and for this category we already have a container where I want to set the height to be 1 200 and the width to be 150 I'll set a box decoration so a decoration of box decoration where the border should be border dot all of width 2 and color of colors dot gray so color colors dot gray and then a border radius of border radius dot circular of 12 save it now after this uh, box decoration let's call it child where I want to initialize a column and the column will take a children of course and the first item will be image and the second item will be a text so before we do anything let's go to home screen where we are using this flutter logo and instead of this flutter logo let us use our category so category let's check where is it coming from this one is coming from where let us use this category all right so save it and now we have it now you see we have a problem the first problem being there is a bit too little space between this text and this box and there is a bit too little space between each of these boxes so first of all let us go between the padding and the container and call a const sized box and give it a height of 8 that's looking about perfect and for the item builder where we are using this category widget let us wrap it with a row and after this category let us pass another const sized box of width and give it a value of 10 save it nice now let us go to the category widget and let us start editing firstly inside the column I want a container so a container that has a height of 150 and a width of 150 I'll set the decoration to be box decoration where the border radius actually we do not need any decoration here I'll just leave it out let's call this child and the child should be image dot asset and I'll just use this dummy address here let's save it so this is what the image will look like and after this uh, container I want to use a const sized box of height 10 and after that let's use a text that's going to take a name and I'll pass a style for it of text style it will take a font size of 20 save it and this is what we have now to get the name on the left edge we can come to this column and pass a cross axis alignment of cross axis alignment dot start save it and we have it in the beginning also just to have some space I'll add a space here save it 
and this is what it looks like great now let us get the images and the names to do so let us come to the widget part and here I'll make a list that will have maps inside of it and each of the map will have a string key and object value it's object and this variable should be named as categories so let us initialize initialize it to be a list now inside of this list we are going to be using maps so uh, angle parentheses the first thing will be our string key so it will name it cat name and the first value or the first key will be phones and the value will be cat image and for it we are going to be using assets slash images slash if you come to our asset you can see we have our cat phones dot png so here we are going to be passing cat phones dot png all right so we have in total seven category image here so for each of those i'll be pasting one so two three four five six save it great now for the since we already have it here and we still need to edit things inside of it first before we do anything let us go inside of uh, our widget here where you, we are using this name and this uh, text firstly i'll remove this put another bracket here and call our categories at index and pass its cat name and this whole thing should be sent to a string now to do the same for the text here I'll use our categories at index and the key name is cat image and this whole thing should be sent as to string save it now you see we have a problem that this i is not being understood by this file here what an i is get rid of this const and here let us initialize it let int i and inside the constructor we will pass the same thing required this dot i now if we do so we can come to our home screen where we are using this list view builder and we are getting an integer here and we can pass this i inside this category save it and we have the values here now we were currently using 20 items for the list view builder but we only have seven now to fix this let's change this 20 to be seven save it great now here let's come back where we are using this and firstly for this thing should be cat image cat image and this thing here should be cat name save it great we're getting the phone's picture everywhere because that is what we're using and firstly for this image I'll set the fit to be box fit dot cover so box fit dot cover save it now you see our box decoration had a border radius but the, our pictures are pretty angular here to battle it firstly let us copy this box radius border radius copy it come to this image widget and wrap it with a center and change the center to be clip r rect clip r rect forces its child widget to have a border radius and it has a border radius so we can just paste our border radius save it and voila we have it let us go back we have it seven here right so now it's about time that we start fixing each of this so first one is phones the second one should be laptops and here we have 
cat laptops dot png so cat laptops dot png what's wrong this one should be cat laptops all right the third one i'll use the clothes so c l o a t h e s clothes and this one is clothes cat clothes dot j p e g so cat dot j p e g cat clothes the fourth one i'll use the shoes here so shoes and we have our cat shoes dot jpg so cat cat shoes dot jpg the last two i'll use the furniture so furniture we actually need one more So we have shoes. After the shoes, I'll use watches, B A T C H E S watches. And for watches, we have cat watches dot jpg. So cat watches dot jpg. After that, we have sh furniture and beauty. So lastly, for the second last one, I'm going to use fur. If you are n i t u r e furniture and the name is cat furniture dot jpeg so cat furniture dot jpeg save it and last but not the least we have health so health and for health we have cat beauty dot jpeg so cat beauty dot jpeg save it what's wrong All right, so that was it for the categories, and I do not see anything that we need to change here. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, so now after all these three stacks of widget, we now want another section, namely popular products. Now to get started with popular products, firstly I'll copy what we have for popular brands and the swiper widget here. So we come down. Take this padding and this size box. So come down until we see this size box. Copy it up and paste it. Save it and now we have another popular brands and the swiper. I'll change the popular brands to be popular products. <coughs> Save it. All right. And for the size box where we have this swiper, let us get rid of this swiper. And here I'll use the list view dot builder. set the item count to be 30 item count to be 30 item builder to have a CDX index and it will return us as usual a flutter logo just as a placeholder so flutter logo and I'll give it a size of 80 now after this i'll also increase the size of this size box to be 300 and for the list view builder i'll change the scroll direction to be axis dot horizontal now with that if i save it we have a few different error here So all right, so now we have this setup here, and to fill this place up, 
let us go to this widgets and let's make a new file call it popular underscore products popular underscore products dot dart and here I'll import a material dot dart first of all make a stateless widget name it popular products and for the popular products what I'll do is uh, I'll go to my category widget and I'll copy this entire thing so I'll co copy this entire container and I'll change each of those as per my own needs so I'll just paste it now I have a few different errors here firstly this text here which it doesn't exist so I'm just going to name here let's say name. and for the image I'll go to full cart and get the image that we have inside our full cart so let's come here copy it come to this image paste it and lastly one more thing this is an asset image but we are using a link inside of it so we need to change it from asset to be network save it now we have our widget up and running since we have made the size box to be 300 let, let us put 300 here save it come to our size box and instead of this flutter logo now we can use our popular product save it all right so we have it here now it's about time that we start editing each of those firstly I'll change this width to be 250 and this width to be 250 save it better now for this text uh, I'll set the max line to be 1 the overflow to be text overflow dot ellipsis and after that after this text here I'll use another size box and then a row so a row and inside of this row firstly I'll use uh, another text so what I'll do is I'll just copy this text paste it here and give it max lines of 2 and not only that I'll also wrap this text with a center and change the center to be flexible now after this flexible let us use an inkwell we need an on tap and this inkwell needs a child of icon icons dot shopping cart where is that shopping cart now for this row let us change the main axis alignment to be main axis alignment dot space between save it that's great now uh, let us see since we have used this max line and this overflow this is because if I take this name and write more here and save it you see it's looking much better than going outside the widget and showing us errors all right and let us do the same here I'll change this to be description and also let us write a few more things better much much better so with that uh, now we are almost done the only thing that's left is one more thing let us try something out so I'll just increase this and now I'll increase the size of this image to be 180 let's try 190 
All right, I think that's better. And for each of this row and the text above it, I'll also use a padding. So the padding should be of type symmetric and it should only apply on horizontal. Save it. All right, and also use this padding for the text that we have here. So I'll wrap it with the padding and change this padding to the one below. Save it. Better. Now we are almost done. The only thing left is I want to use a stack widget here. So where we have this image, this container here, I'll wrap this with a with another column and change the column to be a stack. Now inside this stack widget where we have this container, after this container finishes, let us use an icon button. So icon button needs an on pressed and an icon of course. And I'll use a const, not a const, I'll use an icon. Icons dot favorite F V O R I T E favorite save it and I'll wrap this icon button with a position widget with the center and change the center to be positioned and I'll set the top to be 12 and from right I want it to be 12 so now we have something to click on to are we actually clicking it I guess we are now we are not done we also need another position widget so I'll just copy it come underneath it and from top I'll change it to be bottom and instead of using an icon here I'll go with a card and inside the card I'll have a child that takes a text and for now I'll just write here dollar sign 450 dot let's write 250 dot zero and I'll wrap this text with some padding so padding and I'll give here a padding of four better and also I'll use some style here of a text style that takes a font size of 16 save it and voila it's looking much 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 better also since we are here let us get rid of this we do not need this here all right now that is looking nice one more thing while we are here let us go to our home screen and instead of returning this what we could do is we could wrap this entire container before we were using wrapping our products or wrapping our widgets with rows and then using a sized box after it now let us try to wrap this whole thing with a padding so we use some padding here save it and that is looking much better In this lecture, we will get started with a navigation rail widget. A navigation rail widget will be used for this swiper here. So whenever we click into any of this brand, a new screen should pop up where we will have a navigation rail on the left hand side of the screen. And there we can choose any of the brand and depending on the brand that we choose, items should show up. Now to get started, first of all, within this screens folder, I'll make another folder inside the screens folder of course and name it inner screens inner underscore screens inside inner screens folder let us make a new file and call it brands underscore nav underscore rail dot dart and I'll import material dot dart where we need a stateful widget and call it brands nav rail screen save it also for the screen I'll set a static 
const route name I need a static const route name because you will see why after a few minutes we will use this route name uh, because we need to pass some argument whenever we click into any of this and to use the argument we must use our named route and we are going to name it brands nav rail now here we should get a scaffold first of all and before we go any further with this uh, particular uh, widget let let us firstly go to our main.dar here I'm going to initialize our route name so brands and navigation rail screen dot route name and this should give us a context that returns us the exact same widget so brands navigation rail screen alright now one more thing that is left to do is if we come to our home screen where we have this swiper where is our swiper here we have our swiper and whenever we click into any of this swiper this swiper has an on tap method or on tap argument where we always get the index so the number of item that we are clicking the index of the item that we are clicking and we can pass that index whenever we click and whenever we get the new screen so to get that let us call our navigator dot of context dot push named and inside push named we are going to write our brands navigation real screen dot route name let's put a comma here save it and after the route name we get we also have another argument here known as the arguments and here I want to pass the index alright so now we're good whenever we click something we have a new page now let us start working on the navigation rail screen So for the scaffold, let us call the body and the body for the body we are going to use a row first of all. A row takes the children. Now inside the row on the left hand side we want our navigation rail system. So let us call navigation rail here. And navigation rail has three important arguments that you must provide. So uh, we have our destinations, we have our selected index. I'll use the selected index above the destination. And also we have on destination selected. On destination select gives us an index whenever we click something and we can do something with the value that we have. So these three are the must arguments that you must provide. Now firstly let us make a few variables so firstly uh, string route args and since it's going to take some time let us put late we also have late string brands one more thing let's make another variable int selected index and initialize it to zero now this selected index could be used here and on destination selected should call the set state and our selected index now should equals to be the index that we get on destination selected all right as for this destination we have to change it to be items and here we can use a navigation rail destination navigation rail destination has icon and label that you must provide so I'll put an icon icon icons dot home for the for the label let us pass a text and write here home now this is not it you must provide at the very least of three values so I'll just copy it and paste it two more times so that you can see it 
So we have our items here. And let us come here to the navigation rail system and call our label. So label type. Label type will take navigation rail label type. Navigation rail label type. And I'll set it to be all. So all the items should have their um, label. Now what I want is I do not want to show any of the icons because I want to set the name of our brands here so I'll just set it to be null null and null all right now before we go any further with the UI firstly let us get the argument that we are getting so here we have a deep change dependency inside deep change dependency we can set our route args so we call our route args and it should be equals to model route dot off context dot settings dot arguments and this should be to string and here all right so what this route args is doing is whenever we click onto the swiper we are getting the index and that index is coming here and it's getting saved inside this route args now we can do what we can call our route args so route args dot int routers dot and after we get this routers we can call our selected index and selected index should equals to be int dot parse and the parse should come from route args dot substring so substring of 0 until 2 so with that we can now set a condition here if selected index equals to 0 we call a set state where brands should equals to be adidas now let us copy it a few more times so zero we have adidas we have apple we have adidas apple dell h&m huawei nike and samsung so adidas and then it should be apple dell nike h&m let's go to our assets Dell this should be H and M Huawei QA Huawei and we have a Nike also we have Samsung so as we are getting each of the argument we are setting the brand name to be that exact thing now for the ui for the ui firstly i want to set this text to be adidas and this text should be in a rotated box so if we rotate it so let's copy it put it in a center and then change the center to be rotated box and rotated box has a quarter turn argument so quarter turn should be three you see this is the view ui that i want so let us copy it and let us get rid of both of this and paste it one two adidas apple dell h&m huawei nike samsung save it now we have all the items that we want so let us change from Adidas. Second should be Apple. I'll get the Huawei name. Dell. H and M. Huawei. Nike. And Samsung. So save it. This is what we have. Now let us just try it out. 
so if we click Apple invalid value invalid value because for the substring here where we have the substring I set it to be 0 and 2 it should be 0 and 1 so save it now you see we clicked Apple and Apple is what we have let us go back let us go to Nike and if we click it Nike is what we have great now also we have one more item that we want is I want to select this navigation rail copy it paste it one more time and right here all so if you click all I want all these brands to be visible and lastly for this navigation rail we can also set a leading so a leading I'll set it to be circle avatar and circle avatar is a circle avatar as you know a circle avatar and I want to set some padding for it so I want to set the wrap the circle avatar with some padding that should only be on top so only it should be top of 20 let's make it 50 all right now we have a problem our problem is you see you cannot scroll it and hence we are overflowing and we have an error the problem is even if you wrap this navigation ra rail with a single child scroll view you won't be able to scroll across the solution is we can firstly let us copy this entire navigation rail so we cut it out we cut it out and now we use a layout builder so a layout builder a layout builder takes a context and constraints and this will return us inside it we are going to return constraint box constraint box inside constraints box we have a constraint value where I want to set the box constraints box constraints of minimum height and the minimum height should come from the constraint so the minimum height should be cons dot maximum height also as a child I want to set the intrinsic height and for the child of the intrinsic height I'll set the navigation rail now if we save it one more thing before we use this constraint box we also need to wrap it with a single child scroll view now if we save it we have the scrolling functionality that we need all right great let us do some improvement for this navigation rail screen first of all uh, from the home page that we have s select this entire background image so copy it come back to your navigation rail screen where you have this circle avatar and set it so I want the same exact image now for the navigation rail we have a selected label textile selected label textile will take a text style where we can set some uh, later spacing let's write 2.5 save it and this is what we get let us also set the text size to be 25 and we also want some decorations so let us go to the decoration where were we here I want some decoration and the decoration should be text decoration 
dot underline so text decoration dot underline save it and this is what we get so whenever we click onto something this is the look that we get on it also one more thing the way we have our selected label textile you can also have an unselected label textile which you can set however you desire all right so one more thing that i have forgotten to add in the last video is also fine that whenever we click onto any of this brand we get taken to that uh, screen with the brand being selected but we also have a button here known as view all to use the view all let us copy this much of the brand's navigation screen that we use with navigator off and let us paste it here now instead of writing index since we do not have access to this on tap index anymore we're going to write it manually clicking 7 so with that if we save it and if we click view all we get taken to the all section now inside a brand's navigation rail one thing that I haven't done is I have always written it as selected index equals to zero selected index equals to zero this thing should be zero and then one then we have two and then we have three four five and six now one more thing I'll just minimize each of this each of this if line so minimize minimize now what I'll do is I'll copy all of this if line here so control C to copy it and now we are going to be using it down here where we have this on destination selected inside this set state we are going to paste it this is because whenever we reselect the destination I want it to be updated again so save it and I'm just going to minimize each of this because it takes a whole lot of space on my screen so now we have for Adidas until Samsung so Adidas until Samsung we also need one more for our all section so copy it paste it here and we write here selected index equals to 7 and brands should be all so save it and now we are good or I'll just keep it commented out I'll use it when we need to later in the video so with that I'll see you in the next one with the content that we need for each of the brand hi everyone so in this video we will finish up the navigation rail section completely now before we go further what I would like to do is inside of this destination you can see it is a long long list now to simplify it we can click into any of this and quick action then extract method and we can name the, this method nav rail rotate rotated box so this is what we have now if you come down you see you have this extracted and what we want is we want a string text and we can replace this text here also we can change this icon to be a const all right now with that I'll just copy this Huawei because I messed this name up and we can get rid of all the widget that we have so from here until here now let us paste it here and we will have it one two three four five six seven eight times so copy it we already have one time two three four five six seven eight save it and now see all of them are Huawei so I'll change them Adidas Apple Dell H and M I'll keep the this one to be Huawei then we have Nike and then Samsung and lastly we have all 
now if we save it much much better now let us start working with what goes here firstly uh, let us come outside everything and let us make a new stateless widget and we will name it content space now inside this stateless widget we will expect a, a final string brand so we can pass it here called required this dot brand now what should go inside of this widget firstly we want an expanded here so expanded expanded inside expanded let us call its child and pass a padding so padding and inside padding padding of const edge inset from LTRB and firstly I want 24 and all of them should be 0 0 0 alright now after the padding we have our child where we want to use media query dot remove padding and context should be context for the child we will pass a container so a container save it now before we go further with the container here I'll set the remove top to be true now inside of the container let us call its margin and pass a const of edge inset only edge inset only of top and pass 50 here now after it we have the child and for the child I want a list view dot builder so the item count will stay about 10 for now and for the item builder I'll pass a context index and it will it should return us a flutter logo as usual as a placeholder little later we will change it when we have the widget to do so so with that now we can use this content space up inside our widget so we are in the row and we were using this layout builder after this layout builder let us use our content space and pass the brand to be our brands variable so now if I save it you see we have our flutter logo now we will change it pretty soon so inside our inner screens let us make a new file call it brands nav rail widget dot dart now for this widget I'll import our material dot dart call it a stateless widget and give it a name of brand nav rail widget now as a starter I want to firstly pass an inkwell an inkwell because later we want it to be tappable so I'll just put this here and now for its child we can go to our popular product that we had here popular product and copy this entire padding so go down go down so take this entire padding copy it and paste it here now if I save it and go back to our brands navigation rail screen where we were using this flutter logo and instead of this flutter logo let us use our brands navigation rail widget and if I save it this is what you see now it's time to improve upon it firstly for this container where we have this image I'll set the width to be double dot infinity save it and I'll get rid of this favorite icon because we do not need it here so instead of deleting it I'll just commit it out I don't know later we might need it so save it it's gone also where we have this description let us change it to category and also get rid of this inkwell so this this here 
commit it out save it and voila we have it so let us go back come back to it and yes it is looking nice all right so now let us get started with the wish list screen here we have this wish list also I want one here now let us go to the home screen where we have the actions so for now we have this leading and we have this action so after this action let us get one more icon button so I'll just copy it paste it here and this should be instead of this circle avatar we should get an icon that says icons dot favorite and what's wrong what went wrong all right so let us get rid of this circle avatar and let us call an icon here of icons dot favorite all right now whenever we click this I want to navigate to the wish list screen now let us get started with wishlist so in the screens let's make a new file call it wish list underscore screen dot dart let us rename it and in the wishlist screen let us first import material and wishlist will be very similar to cart and things that goes about about it so firstly let us do a stat list and say it a wish list the ish list wish list screen give it a static const so a static const route name of wish list screen now after that let us change it to be a scaffold and now we can go to our main.dart where we have all the routes here and pass the wishlist screen.route name to be ctx wishlist screen now we can use it in our home screen where we have this favorite button and we can do an navigator navigator and dot off context dot push named and the name should be our wishlist screen dot route name and let us copy it because we also need it in the user screen where we have that user bag and inside the user bag we have this favorite so this one here and we can pass the same thing here and of course we need to import the wish list so with that save it and now if we click here we come to a new screen even if we come to our home and click the heart button we do not go to a new screen because we haven't saved it so now with the save if I click this we go to a new screen great now it's about time that we implement an empty wishlist screen and a full wishlist screen so firstly let us go to the widgets and make a new file call it empty underscore wishlist dot dart and here I'll import material dot dart make a step less widget write empty wishlist d wish list 
and for the return I'll go to the empty card that we have and take the entire return here so I'll copy the entire single child scroll view copy it close it come to our wish list and paste it here save it now to see if everything is alright let us go to our wish list where we have this body and let us call the empty wish list so empty wish list save it go to our wish list and this is what we have now for the empty wish list we have a new image and the image is known as empty wish list.png so I'll use your empty wish list.png save it and let's change it to be contain all right and for the text I'll set it to be your wish list is empty and looks like you didn't add anything yet all right that is good now also one more thing that we need is we want to set up the full wish list screen so come to the widget and make a new file call it full underscore wish list dot dart and we call an import of material dot dart call a stateless widget here name it full wish list and here I'll go to the full card and get the entire return statement here so copy it all copy it now firstly let us change the stateless widget to a stateful one in the full wish list and let us paste it here great now to see what the full wish list looks like let us change it here to the full wish list now if we change it this is what the full wish list should be like alright so now with that uh, for the full wish list we do not need the row down there so I'll get rid of the row of this row here we do not need this row so remove it we do not need the this row for the shipping and we do not need this row for the subtotal what we need is after the text here of monitor that you see here the title we need the exact same thing so I'll just copy this const size box alongside the upper row this row that has our um, button or we can just copy this size box come after this row and take this text as well so I'll just take this entire text copy it and paste it here now here for the column I'll set the main axis alignment to be main axis alignment dot start or should it be cross axis so axis to be cross axis alignment dot start all right get rid of this also one more thing in our full card I had this written as const here which shouldn't really be the case this here shouldn't be the case all right this was in the full card remove this now for our description here that we added in the full wish list I write it to be description description it should have a max line of 4 and make the item of 18 yeah, it's about right so close it now for the wishlist screen 
let us open our card screen that we have have it here in the card screen let us copy whatever we have inside this build widget so for this build widget let us copy all of this copy it come to our wishlist screen and instead of this so get rid of this paste it here we do not need this bottom section remove this and here we are going to be using empty wishlist and instead of this one we are going to be using full wishlist so save it and this is what we have and since we are in the wishlist screen this this thing should change to be wishlist instead of cart now let us try our wishlist this is what the full wishlist looks like and if we change this exclamation and save it this is what the empty wishlist looks like so I'll decide if you want to keep it in full or if you want to keep it in empty for now I'll just keep it in full save it and this is what it is do we have some safe area here uh, no there is no safe area so return scaffold scaffold all right hi everyone in this video we will implement this product detail screen that you can see here this product detail screen has a fixed image here that that can change depending on the widget that we are clicking and here we have a stack on top of which we have this scrollable widget where you can save the image and you can share it also you get the name of the product the price the description here and we will change this later on after we have done it together customers can write their review here and after that we have this products feed which we use as our suggested product now here in our screens folder I've made a new file I mean inside our inner screens folder I have made a new file called the product detail screen or how you can see it here product underscore details underscore screen dot dart and this is a state full widget and I've named the widget product detail screen also I've gone ahead and added a route name as product detail screen now how do you use this firstly I've gone into main.dart where I have initiated this product detail screen dot route name and context which return is returning us this product detail screen also for this feed screen where we have this feed screen I have wrapped this stack inside a ink well so that we can click into any of this and come here and inside of this I have written navigator of context that push named product detail screen dot route name alright so now let us get started with this product detail screen firstly this is what the empty page should look like because now we only have a scaffold and now let us get started firstly let us set an app bar inside the app bar let's set the app bar widget where we want the title to be text details all right what I have I have done is I have coded this entire thing before and then I have deleted everything strategically and now I'm only pressing ctrl Z to go back while explaining I'm just press pressing ctrl Z so you do not have the problem of looking at me typing so you can pause the video and continue or you can listen to me and pause the video and continue all right so we have this scaffold inside of which we have this app bar and an app bar with the title save it this is what we have after that we have the actions parameter actions so that we can set here some icon button and inside of this we have an icon button with a navigator of context that push name and the first one will take us to the wishlist screen dot route name then we have the icon which will give us a const icon of icons dot favorite so now if I save it this is what we get then after this after this entire icon button after this here we have another icon button 
where we have the on pressed and same we are going to pass this navigator of contacts that push named and pass the card screen dot route name after that we have the icon for this icon button and where we are going to pass an icon widget with icons dot shopping cart so if i save it this is what you see all right so now let us go and fix the body of the scaffold for the body we want a stack a stack because as you can remember first we have that non-movable widget that image on top of which we have that scrollable widget so firstly we need a container and inside the container we are going to wrap the foreground decoration and for which we are going to be using the box decoration inside the box decorations let us set the color first of colors.black12 this will give us a hue of black with some opacity then let us set the height to be media query of context dot size dot height of 0 0.45 then let us set the width to be double dot infinity and lastly for the child of this container I'll be setting an image dot network and we're getting the image from our feeds product so you can use the image that we were using in our feeds product and after that we want to use this single child scroll view so for the padding I'll be using const edge inset symmetric of vertical 20 and the column will be a column so if I save it this is what you see and this single child scroll view is here on top of this thing so now inside the column we have the cross axis alignment as cross axis alignment dot start and the children for the children let us pass a size box first and then some padding of const agent set all of 16 save it nothing because until now we haven't put any title or text anything so after that let's pass a child where we want a row of for which we want some alignment of main axis alignment dot end and then a children for the row inside of which we have an icon button an icon button with an icons of save and another icon button with an icons of share so save it this is what you see after that after this entire padding so after this padding that you see here we have this container inside of which we are going to pass another padding of all 16 and a child that is going to take a column of cross axis alignment cross axis alignment dot start inside of which we are going to be passing another children which will take a padding and the padding will take a padding argument where we want to pass const agents at all of 16 now for the child let us pass a column and the column will take a cross axis alignment of cross axis alignment dot start and the column will have its own children where we want to pass a container with a width of media query of context dot size at width of 0 0.7 after that let us pass a child for this container with a text that takes a title and a style of text style that takes a font size of 28 and a font weight of font weight dot bold of w600 then let us pass a size box after this whole container so the size box and after that let us pass a text that takes a uh, amount of 250 with a style of textile of this save it this is what we have now after that after this entire padding that you see after this entire padding we are going to be passing this const size box after which we need another padding and for the padding argument of this padding widget we will pass this edge inset dot symmetric of horizontal 8 and as a child we will pass a divider widget here with all these properties of thickness 1, colors.gray and a height of 1 now cons size box 3 and a padding that takes another cons size const edge insert of all dot 16 and as, as a child we want to pass a text where we want to firstly write description so if I save it this is what you see and then pass a style for it with a text style as you can see it has a font size of 21 and a font weight of font weight dot w600 save it this is what it is after the text I mean after the whole padding here we have another size box after which we have another padding and the padding has a const 
agents at symmetric of 8 and a child of a divider again all the divider in this um, screen will have the same exact configuration so after this padding we have another padding where we have the padding property as this of only top left and right which has a child of a row which is it has a children if I save it and then inside the children we have a text where we have a title save it and then after the title we have a style and after this entire text since of the row we have another text that takes a title name we will edit this later and it has a style of text style with a font size of 20 great now after that we have the same exact thing so I'm just going to control Z it because if you just have a look at it you see this is the same exact thing and we will have this for one two three four times so I'm just going to press ctrl Z a few more times because that is what we will be having so if I press save now you see we have one more time and then we are going to be having this one whole more time so as you can see we have this total four times and now it's done so now I'll go slow again and explain so after this padding we have this const size box for which we have a divider now if I save it you see we have a divider now after the divider we have a container that takes a color of colors dot black and a width of double dot infinity and a column or for which we are going to be setting the cross axis alignment to center and inside of it firstly we are going to be setting a size box so inside this we are going to be setting a size box and if I save it my bad and if I save it you see this is what we have so let us write more and here let us set a padding with agents at all of 8 and as the child I'll set a text of no reviews yet and put a style for it of textile of font size 21 another padding after this padding with a padding of agents at all of 8 and as a child pass a text of be the first to review pass a style for it and let us save it so this is what we have after this however we have another sized box of 70 to increase the size of this box and a divider after it so if I save it you see this is what we have now we go outside this whole container and this container started up here somewhere this container started here and alright so we are in the container after this column so here let us pass the width and a padding with a child of text that is going to take suggested products so suggested products will have a style of textile that you can see here and after that let us pass a container after this entire container here as a margin and for this container we pass the margin and a width after the width let us pass the height and as a child I'll set a least view builder a least view builder will take a scroll direction of axis dot horizontal because we want it to be horizontally scrollable and not vertically and then pass an item builder for it with an item count of seven and as a insider for the item builder I will pass a padding inside of which we have a child of feeds product now with all of that if I save it you see we have a very nice widget here now finally after all of that let us go up and we want to set a bottom section here so for the scaffold we have our bottom sheet and for the bottom sheet let us pass a row inside of which we will have three button and the first one and all of them will be expanded 
So, an expanded with a flex of 3, so the first one will have a flex of 3, the second one a flex of 2, and the first one will have the flex of 1. And as a child, we want the container. Inside of the container, let's pass a color of pink accent and a height of 50 with a center child for the container, and the child will take a text button. A text button with an on pressed of empty for now, and a child of text that takes a text of add to cart. And let us pass a style for it of this. So with that, if I save it, this is what we have. After this expanded here, let us pass another expanded. So another expanded with a flex of two and a child that takes a container inside of which we have a color, a height and another child of center. And the center child will take another text button that will have an empty on pressed. And as a child, we are going to be passing this text with this style. After that, we have another expanded for which we have a flex of a 1. Oh, by the way, let us save it here first. So you can see now we have two button. All right, so after this expanded, another expanded with a flex of 1 and a child that is going to be taking a container of color dot gray with the opacity this and a height of 50. And as a child for this container, we'll be passing a center like before. But now we will pass an icon button instead of text button for this center with an empty on pressed and as a icon child we'll pass this icon so now if we save it this is what we have now one more thing that I would like to do up here where we have this bottom sheet we have a very long row so I wouldn't do extract this widget and call it bottom sheet save it much better and for this items here where we have this title 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 I would like to do a bit of editing there too so uh, just a few moments if I come down where we have this padding padding and title so each of this padding so I will I'll keep my cursor on this padding where we have this title and title name and also extract this extract widget name it uh, con underscroll content row I'm just naming it whatever you can name it whatever you want so this content row if we come down we have this content row and for this content row I want to pass a string so a final string title and a final string name title I'm just naming it and here we will do required this dot title and required this dot name title so now we can go here and write it that this should be the title so I'll wrap it with this so we can pass the title and here I'll just pass our name title so with that we can go up here and where is it here we have our content row so content row needs a title and the first one should be and the first one should be brand and the name title I'll pass it to be brand name and we can copy this and paste it three more times one two three and let us get rid of the padding that we have here so get rid of this padding get rid of these two paddings as well so save it and we have this brand name brand name brand name whatever and then we want a quantity so q u a n t i t y quantity 
of 12 left and then a category so a category of let's name it cat category name pass a brand name and for the last one let us pass popularity so popularity and it should be popular so save it and this is what we have so that was it for uh, this video i'll see you guys in the next one hi everyone so in this video we will be setting up a new folder first of all call it in the lib folder name it models and inside the models folder i'll set up a new file called the product dot dart now inside this product dot dart i want to make a custom class a custom class that should define what a singular product should look like should be like and should have so let's make a new class and name it product and a product if you think about it should have a final string it ha should have a string id a unique identifier it should have a name hence the title it should have a description so what it does or what it is it should have a double price a double because usually prices have decimal number attached to it so 129.99 and so the final string image URL so what does the product look like the final string product category name so what is the category that the product belongs to should have a final string brand name so which brand does it belong to a final int quantity so how many product do you have I mean how many instances of that individual product is left a final bull is it favorite so is it favorite for one singular user or not and finally final bull is popular so is the product popular among a lot of user or not now let us make a constructor for this field create constructor for final field and this is what we would have but let's control Z so after this let's reinitialize the recall rewrite the class name with the first bracket and inside of this first bracket we pass a second bracket and here we write required this dot ID and then this dot title this dot brand this dot description dot image URL is favorite is popular the price its category name and lastly but not the list its quantity since we are inside the third bracket option so we are using named parameter the index of each of this doesn't matter because we'll be using the name whatsoever so with that we are done implementing our product class in the next video we will use dynamic widget hi everyone for this video we will be using dynamic data for our feed screen so up until now inside our feed screen we just had this iPhone picture that you could see all the way down now to use dynamic product first of all head to our github page so you can write this link github.com slash noiman slash flutter underscore shop underscore cpt21 and then you will come here where you will see that by default you are in the master branch 
If you expand it and then go all the way down, 2.1 implementing product model class. What I have done is after the last video, I have gone ahead in the lib file inside screens and cart screen. I have added this list of product. So please copy this from here. Copy everything. Copy from list until the end. Until here. Copy this much and bring it to your app. Now for me, I'll bring it inside my feeds product. So I'll go to my card screen and copy this much. Control C. And I'll use it for my feeds product or the feed screen. So inside of our feed screen, I'll just paste it here. Now I need to import our product. So I'll just import it and I'll just keep it minimized. Let's get rid of this const. Come to bottom navigation, get rid of this const. Come to home, get rid of this const. All right. So now uh, we have our list of product in, inside our pro feeds screen. Now to pass them into our uh, feeds product, we have to go to this feeds product. And here, as you can see, we are expecting a description, a price, a quantity. And uh, if the product is is favorite. So we could go to our product.dart and copy this much. So copy it, come to feeds product and let us paste it here. Now we do not need the title, we do not need the brand and category name, we do not need if the product is popular. Now let us go to the constructor and here we can pass require this dot id description image url price is favorite and quantity so now these are the items that we must provide and to provide them we have to come to our feed screen where we can provide such things now one thing our list of product should be a list of product because this list has products and we have named the variable products also, this list for now is a final list, so I'll just mark it as final or you can not mark it as final. Now inside of this feeds product, you have to pass the ID, so let us pass the ID by products at the index because we're getting the index from this grid view builder here in the item builder, dot ID, let's get rid of the const, then we have the description and likewise we write products I. So I'll just copy this much, dot description, image url, dot image url, is favorite, dot is favorite, price, dot price, quantity, dot quantity. So with that, now we have our product detail. Inside our product detail, we have some problem because we are, if you come down here, inside this product detail, we have some problem because inside product detail, we are using this feeds product that we cannot pass the data right now. So I'll just comment this out inside product detail screen and we will uncomment it later when we have all the data from the Firebase. So get rid of this and let us go back to our feed screen or the feeds product. Now for the image, I can get rid of this and call our widget dot image url save it yes for the description we can write widget dot description for the price, I'll keep the dollar sign, so let us pass the dollar sign again, and here we write widget dot price. We have the new price, and 
for the quantity we just want to change this 12 so again a dollar sign with third bracket and inside of this we write widget dot quantity so with that if we save it this is what we have great now we have dynamic data inside our feed screen and with that we are going to conclude this video so see you good day everyone this video will be the last and final video for this particular section in this section what I'd like to do is go to this uh, back layer that we have so the back layer that we have and I'd like to get rid of uh, everything other than the upload product so I'll just remove all of this because we really don't need any of those here and finally we can go to the home screen where we are using the back layer and for the back layer where we have this and for the back layer where we have this uh, header height I'll increase the size to be 0 0.1 or 0 0.4 Alright, so uh, that was it for this entire section. I'll see you guys in the next one.